So I know that people are exhausted, as they usually are after an agenda, but I think that we should at least try to have some questions and answers. Uh, uh, if any of you have had questions during the day. Actually, I'm thinking uh, that Espen, uh, uh, I think the most, right at the moment with the... Um, with the tearing down, demolishing of the e blocking and the new planning of Oslo, I, I think we should ask you while you're here, uh, is there this anger and hatred that uh, Le Corbusier still can stir in people that is said in articles about him? I'm thinking, why is uh, Norway, what is this like when, when people with a more, maybe you can say populistic view, like uh, Rolnes, Kjetil Rolnes, when when they're like so aggressive towards the ugliness of modernistic architecture, uh, is that very Norwegian, or or the the anger is that is that something that you think is particular in Norwegian, or is it everywhere? Uh, I don't know, but I, it's my impression that it is uh, not particularly Norwegian. It is uh, everywhere. Um, I think the problem here is that uh, the government that want to tear down the building, they. I'm sure that they find it ugly, but they don't dare to say it. They could be much more honest to say it, fact, actually, that, that that was their meaning. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm also... Um, but uh, the um, way of heritage at, and, and um, thinking of heritage, is that is something that is very uh, typical. Oh, that also th this, this this low st status that heritage has in Norway is a paradox. Also. I think that that is uh, that would never happen anywhere. I think when in some Riksantikvarn, the Oslo municipality and so on, then so many institutions, experts and so on, really are willing to 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 defend this work, and that doesn't help. That is very special. But uh, that I find it ugly, that is quite normal, I think. Uh, uh, I'm not, uh, since you mentioned Seth Rollness, um, I'm a little bit um, yeah, also angry about him because <laughs> he started in some way the process and he let us give us back Arne Garbors Plus. So that was his argument. But uh, I could show you a picture of when Wiksjö where started his works with the government building, Arne Garbos Plus didn't exist at all. So, um, and was a, a parking lot, more or less, at that time, actually. So, uh, uh, also I think that, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like that argument at all. So, uh, and also there's another failure there, there they link it to the leftist, to, to the communist buildings, uh, this uh, government style, etc. But um, this kind of um, brutalist architecture, they started in 555, etc. That is when Stalin has retired and so on. And then, and so on. And then they, the, the communist uh, architecture shifted the, the, the side towards the brutalists. So uh, to link it only to the leftist architect is complicated. Though, I must say, that I done a lot of research on uh, Viksjö, and in the government building there are several times, and also in Viksjö's project, references to Marxist architecture, done by Russian architects, for instance, in London and so on. Yeah, so he's a link there, but Viksjö himself was never a communist. Yeah. There's so many interesting questions. Uh, so. Uh, where should we start? Where, where you well, I was just thinking that the, when they moved the library, Dijkman's uh, Bibliothek, uh, somebody wrote on, we were discussing this on Facebook, and somebody wrote exactly that thing, that if they tore down the E-block, which is built actually in the 70s, first he built the Høyblokka, and then the E-block, then, uh, uh, then the, the space would be beautiful, like like you said. But the point is, when you m because it was actually made by Victor, assumably to part the uh, church and the library because they were two different styles. And so somebody said, so he should tear it down because it's an idiotic idea. Like they don't see it ob the object in itself. But then I I answered because I thought that was a strange thought. I thought 
Well, but now the library is going to be privatized. It's going to be sold on the open market. So why should we give light to a staircase to a private building? It's like we have like some kind of <laughs> like we should as a public we should like be sure that the privatized building should have enough sun. That's a strange argument, but um, uh, but I think when uh, I would like to ask Thomas as a as an American who's lived in Norway for many years, uh, how do you consider this? Because I went with a friend through New York and I said it's so strange because all these tall buildings are so old. Why don't they change it? And she said because everything is private. So these private people cannot afford everything to be torn down. So when they are like making the brass every morning, we, like we, they have some person to stand outside and going over. Have you seen that in New York? That people go outside in the in the financial district and they and they uh, they push, uh, push, uh, uh, polish the brass. And that is so weird. And it's called like, why is it so old fashioned? Well, because because it's actually not affordable to take it down and build it up. So what's the difference between Norway and and like, uh, what's your thoughts about this? Um, fir first question is why do you always ask me such difficult questions? <laughs> I should stand up. Uh, what was the question again? What's the difference between? Uh, I would say that that uh, these things happened a lot in in ha have happened everywhere, and you know there are famous cases in New York as well. Uh, Penn Station was torn down, which is a beautiful uh, sort of. Um, 19th century building against everyone's protests. Um, so this has been a, a thing. But I think it's surprising in Norway because you have the sense that it wouldn't happen here. Uh, it does, definitely. Um, and maybe also Norway is like a little bit behind the times, to put it in that way, that they're still... I think if you look at the, the situation around, around uh, the government quarter, it's not very clean in a certain sense, right? It's a... It has a lot of sort of half-finished plans, um, and uh, the government quarter itself is sort of planned over over time. You have the tunnel, you have the church, you have the library, you have the e-blocke, you have the hay blocke, you have the justice building, and you know you have what was it called R or something, the one behind it that used to have the little helicopter pad on it. Um, incredibly sort of sort of um, uh, salt, to put it in that way, um, and I think to actually understand or to appreciate it, requires a little bit of thought yeah. or a little bit of appreciation of that complexity. If you're thinking too simply about it, it's just kind of a mess. And I think that for them, it's like, well, we have this tunnel, we have this building, it's kind of ugly, it's kind of small, uh, it's a security problem, uh, let's build something new and nice. That's kind of the attitude. And if you try to engage them on a more sort of, uh, on a deeper level, don't really have time, you know? That's the kind of feeling. So I don't think it's like really a, a lack of, of, um, of respect or anything like that, although of course it is, but um, it's basically just there isn't the depth of conversation that I think there should be. Uh, it takes time. If you go and you look at that building, uh, you block it in context, it takes three or four times actually going there and looking at it before you actually, uh, maybe it is actually a pretty good building. You know, the first impression is kind of like, well, what happened here? You know, they kind of didn't manage to do I mean, that's, you know, coming when I first came and saw it before the, they had built the stairs, uh, which came in the 90s, I guess, the, the ones that go up along the, along the side. It used to just be a tunnel entrance underneath it and kind of hanging out over it like that. It was pretty bad, actually, yeah. you know. Um, but after a while, you start to see... You know, I don't know. It's so are you, are you for or against demolish, uh, to demolish it? Uh, what would you argue? Uh, would you I think it would be, I don't have a really strong opinion, but yeah. I do think that it would be more interesting to keep it. Yeah. I think that if you kept it, you could do something, you could make the next step. Now I think they're going to sort of remove it and then build something probably worse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I think that's, that's like not a very interesting solution. Yeah. But I don't have like, you know, I don't, I'm not morally... Uh, affected by whether they tear it down or not, you know that some things happen. You know, I'm more upset about them uh, tearing down the building in Meyerstrom, the the old uh, Kreditkas, no, the old Kreditkas uh, building, uh, which is by the Fugger Park, and uh, just because of what it represents in the Oslo housing market, it's just you know. Um, but I do think it could be super interesting to say, okay, at the at the government quarter, just keep everything, 
and then try to figure out how you put all of this new program in there. I think it could be a really interesting program for an architect to work with, yeah. but they haven't been able to do it. You know, we did at the school uh, a, an extra proposal when the, when the competition was announced, um, and um, Stolzbeck was interested in that. But when we delivered it, we kept the e-block, and so they suppressed the project because they didn't want it actually to even be discussed in the academic context. So, you know. That's interesting. We have a question on Hilda. Yeah. Thank you. It's kind of a question or a comment, I'm not sure. I've also spent half my life in another country, more or less, um, in London. And one and the e blocker debate um, upsets me. Uh, uh, and I think, uh, but when I, f I mean, London is, is um, we have a conservative government and uh, ideas around conservatism is to conserve, right? They're not um, interested in conserving. London is also a very conservative place in lots of ways and they are conserving an awful lot of the time. I'm talking very generally now, not specifically in terms of um, building projects, but one of the things I felt when living there was this incredible deep respect of the heritage and history. It's almost like whatever, wherever you're walking, you're sort of referencing the past. And now perhaps Britain has been very good at representing its past uh, through other culture as well, in terms of literature and landscape paintings, in terms of also, uh, in terms of architecture, which is also quite conservative a lot of the time. Um, also films and costume dramas, and it's very good at talking about its past. Coming to Norway, I felt that we were very interested in talking about the future, at least the near future. And one of the first things I was told was, we had this um, app where you could see the new museum and you could sort of hold your phone up and you can see this is how it's going to be. And I clearly felt that, and there was always talk about a new Dijkman and there was constantly information about all these new buildings I arrived around 2012. And, and this sort of existing in the very near future is quite an interesting idea and I feel like that's also around the e-blocker. We're sort of not dealing with the present, like you're saying, it's a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit weird, it's got lots of history, it's interesting, it's convoluted, complex, but it's somehow wanting to project this other idea of itself, this near future. And funnily enough, and this is really sort of a bit random maybe and thinking aloud, but also visiting people in their homes here visiting, getting old new friends and, and coming into their houses, I have very often felt that I was like, oh, great flat. Yeah, it's great, but this wall needs to come down. And then we're getting new tiles here. And everyone seemed to have these projects that were in the near future where they were going to change their houses. And it was quite different from London where you just sort of, <laughs> I don't know, it's just there. It's from 1840. It's terraced house, two up, two down. It's, it's like not anything... Um, you don't have to, you know, you were talking about doubting and it's standardized. <laughs> it's somehow, it's, it's, it's what it is. It's not this kind of having to think about itself all the time. But yeah, e-blocker, I think, must, of course, uh, I, I feel very strongly about this, must stay, must be preserved um, so that we're not sort of ending up with this personality-free, history-free um, city because it's incredibly boring. Of course, you have the aspect of, of the 22nd of July. So you have this thing that when they're using it, uh, you can use it both ways in a discussion. You can say that we should tear it down because of this 22nd of July. You can say we should keep it. I would say that we should keep it. But yeah, I was going to ask you what, what, um, what do you, you, you have the, the discussion about the modernistic architecture, both from Germany and Denmark. And now you get to see this upheated place right at the moment as it is in Norway. Perse preserving or demolishing, Ruth? What's your, where you are stand? <laughs> I don't want to take a stand in this respect. I'm not black or white, but um, I think there's another aspect to it, um, which I, I, I'm really amused that these politicians say that it should be torn down because it's ugly. Because I think whatever is ugly changes all the time. And what I think is ugly is different from what you think is ugly. So for me, it's absolutely not a valid a argument. And I think Thomas, at the beginning of this day, he brought a very good example of that, which was um, when Le Corbusier in the 1920s um, suggested to tear half historical center of Paris down 
people didn't oppose to it because it was considered to be filthy, it was considered to be chaotic. Um, all that, or a good part of that, what people probably now to this government area apply to, and nobody said anyone anything, and now all of a sudden the historical substance is appreciated again. But let that stand alone. I would very much um, argue for um, what Thomas also implied, if I understand correctly, that you have to look a little bit closer. And in this respect, especially, my message would go out to the politician if they want to tear down a whole neighborhood with a lot of built substance that is still running. I just simply can't understand that from a sustainability aspect. I mean, we are talking about resources. We are, our children go out every Friday to demonstrate. And here we are, and we are tearing whole areas down without even considering what that means in terms of wasting resources. And that's not only here, we have it in, uh, in Denmark. We have these ghetto neighborhoods, the government calls it, and they make architecture, I would say, responsible for politics. Um, they are responsible for the last 30 years that didn't work very well. And so if there are social issues, you say, OK, let's, let's turn the buildings down because it's the building's fault. And I just think there's a lot more to it. And I would really encourage governments to also look at these various aspects than just say, OK, this is ugly and this is beautiful because this doesn't get us anywhere because in this respect, I think we would have to tear, I don't know, 80% of all who's down. Um, that's, not, that's not a direction to go. It's funny though, the ugly or not ugly when you meet an art context. I think that one of the things that we in Norway have been at least common people uh, that are not architects are thinking why are the architect's not really very involved. It, it, maybe you are within your environment, but it's not like we, when you go to the demonstrations to preserve something in Oslo, it's not like you hear like the debate is like going high amongst the architects. And that's strange, I think. I don't know what would happen because this is like a, or, uh, 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 all these artists talking about the Picasso all the time. Yeah. And I think that, the, like somebody said, that the Viksha building is as, as important, I think, that we're, if we're going to discuss it, it has to be the whole thing, not just this one thing at one end. <laughs> uh, I, may I comment upon yeah, that? Yeah, sure. uh, there are architects on both sides of these discussions, and uh, uh, I think uh, the profession is starting to wake up. And the problem is, uh, about the power in this country is that we have uh, a prime minister. She, she was brought up in Bergen, and uh, and then you have the city hall, and it's not a very popular building, and it's also more maybe co uh, brutalistic in in the um, situation in the city, and. Uh, Lots of that generation, they have really been hating that building, you know? And that's why she is in the power now to also hate Ublocka. I'm sorry, it's a kind of oligarchic uh, system in this country, and it's really, really bad. And I agree, uh, the politicians are the ones who need to get the message. But I must say, uh, I must say that um, I stayed for, uh, uh, I stayed for, I lived for like six years of my life in the in the living machine, uh, which is called uh, the, uh, they call it on Folkemunne, Stalin Blocka, uh, up at uh, Svartdalen. Uh, and it was great living, except the fact that when you have a small child, when you go in and out of it, it's actually this danger point of having a small child letting her out to to be to play in a playground where so many people together so it's this thing that uh, living in 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 something which other people call ugly but it's close to the city and it's actually a great way of living is under is kind of we're not discussing that anymore 
uh, I think that Espen said something, uh, you said something really interesting during the break. You said that uh, uh, it's um, it's not an anger towards the building, it's an anger towards uh, a special kind of art history or a time in art history period, didn't you? And I think that was very interesting. Could you say something about that? And then we have to summon up the whole. No, yeah, yeah, that was me uh, just uh, yeah, improvising a bit on uh, the E block being, uh, of course, a symbol of, uh, it's more than the architecture, more than the buildings of itself, but a symbol of if uh, a spe very specific period in Norwegian history, both uh, combining the art, architectural and political history and the, like this social democratic uh, yeah conglomeration of some kind uh, that this uh, the whole and that it's not about the individual building you, you can't just tear down e block and keep hey uh, block and keep that story it's uh, yeah but it's uh, that being said I'm uh, I'm way more skeptical towards the entire process of this like how Stotsbig managed to put out the 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 premise about uh, the, the square footage uh, before even having a public debate so that it was locked from the beginning uh, so and that you have uh, who would be controlling the government storting who can't really control uh, starts big uh, which you see from the 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 problematic building of building out of storting you now with when they couldn't use starts big because they're uh, yeah, so it's it's very convoluted and strange. There's no, and you have a party in this uh, debate that doesn't really uh, voice their opinion uh, from, in this case, thoughts big, and also the government, really. Thank you. Do we have uh, one more question? Yes. Uh, actually, not a question, just a small okay. remark. Yeah. Um, uh, I was in Roma, and uh, there. I just was so fascinated to see how they dealt with the subject of um, history in the architectural la language. And, in, Rome. Uh, in Rome, yeah. And there, for example, this district that is built in uh, absolutely in fascist architecture and the monument of this house that is Villa something that I've forgotten, but everybody knows, like the house, maybe 10 story building only with the arches. Villa something, I've forgotten. But the thing is that that's very remarkable and recognizable feature of fascist architecture. And now there is um, a, a main quarter of uh, whether Prada or some fashion brand. And Fendi, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, when you see that it is now an absolutely different uh, artistic language, it's more in fashion, it's more in the visual language of design, uh, not design, but um, the perception of the reference has changed a lot. It's no longer the fascist architect architectural language, but um, it occurred to be more of the visual uh, language that is as a postmodern language now. I don't know why, but I had this feeling when I was there and viewed this pic picture, having um, fashion store in fascist architecture uh -huh. and I don't know yeah. I think it's quite it was a slight change but so impressive um, but um, also I went to see the in Milan uh, which you probably know uh, the 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 new golden tower of Prada a whole city within a quite poor poor uh, area of the city recommended it's kind of horrible you go into this beautiful city and you come into it's Prada made their own art city, art city for contemporary art, with a golden tower in the middle, and in the golden tower, and it's physically golden, and you go up this golden tower, and Wes Anderson made the cafe. It's kind of perverted, and you go up this golden tower, and on the top, there is Robert Gober with one of the most expensive art pieces ever sold, with a heart beating in the ground. So it's kind of, but it's it's in the, like in a, thing but I was going to say I, I grew up in Bergen and Bergen sometimes when I come back there and I go off or go off the train or the plane or whatever I come into the city and I think 
Yeah, you say conservative, it's literally the most conservative city in the northern of Europe, and you come and you think it's too conservative, it's too preserved. I mean, this is almost limiting on per perversion, and nothing changed since I was a child. And I don't know if that's really good for a city either. And uh, when you talk about London, I think that sometimes you come there and you think of it as a, as a scene in the movie, don't you? I mean, it's like they say, it's like it's new criticism towards London. It's just playing to be London. It's not really London anymore because people are living like two hours outside, the pe real people of London, like Venice. And then they go in and they play like they're living in London every day. They look like, try to look like uh, <laughs> Londoners to, to make all the tourists happy. So it's not really a city anymore. And that's, that's, that's kind of scary too, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's many aspects of a city. Uh, I would like to thank everybody, especially the speakers, all of the six brilliant speakers. It's been a fantastic day. I'm so happy that we can meet between art and architecture, like they did in the Bauhaus, like Le Corbusier intended. And we should do that so much more often. And I'm so happy that you all came. Thank you for today. And the next uh, agenda is the 28th of February. It's called <laughs> know your uh, know your Norwegian video art history, and uh, if you're an artist, if you want to be smart, you want to be there. Okay.